Who was the most dominant team in pro football history? The 1972 Miami Dolphins? How about the 1948 Cleveland Browns? They were both undefeated champions of their respective leagues. Or maybe Lombardi's Packers. Or even the 85 Bears. Not so fast. There was a team in mainstream professional football that excelled beyond any of those mentioned above. My name's Darren Hayes, and I'm the author of a book, The World's Greatest Pro Gridiron Team, the 1903 Franklin All-Stars. And I'm proud to say that the Sports History Network is giving away a signed copy of this book to a lucky winner in our latest giveaway, where you can sign up at sportshistorynetwork.com slash giveaways and get your name entered today. Good luck. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello sports fans and welcome to another edition of Yesterday Sports on the Sports History Network. Last week, me and my friend Dave DiPaolo discussed the 1971 AFC Divisional Playoff game between the Miami Dolphins and the Kansas City Chiefs. This week, we will be discussing the 1972 NFC Divisional Playoff game between the San Francisco 49ers and the Dallas Cowboys. Impression on somebody because I remember watching the game myself and saying to myself, geez, when there was a game later on, years later in the 80s, that was going long like that. I think it was the Chargers. Chargers and Dolphins, yeah. It kind of, when I watched that game, it brought me back to that Chief game. Right. When I was watching that game. Yep. Yeah. Okay, now <clears throat> you're going to... Uh, take over, and you're going to do the 1972 NFC Divisional Playoff. It was. The Divisional Playoff game, the 49ers and the Cowboys, and this game, I, I think it's one of the most, un- I picked it because I think it's one of the most underrated pl- playoff games of all time. It never gets talked about. And the uh, incredible part is, it was the same day, as the immaculate reception, maybe that's why. That's right. But the, I just, I, I, this game pretty much was just. You would say, look, the immaculate reception. It was tremendous. There's still talk about it, whether he caught the ball or didn't catch the ball. Franco Harris, yeah. Steelers, and the uh, Raiders. But it was one crazy play in the game. This this game here that I'm going to talk about was a multitude of plays. It was many, but the Cowboys were getting killed. Yes, they, were. they didn't. They didn't. They were not playing well at all. And even as they started coming back, let me preface everything right now by saying this: even when Staubach came in, because he did not start the game, Craig Morton played the entire year. Staubach got hurt earlier in the year in a preseason game. He had a separated shoulder. Played very sparingly towards the as the season went on, but they put him in in this game. I think it was the third series of the third quarter, and even when he had a very good play, it was erased by some other kind of stupid, crazy play or something, and it wasn't like they had a lot of good things going. Like, they started, and then it stopped, and started, and there was never a really flow to the whole thing, but the multitude of things that happened at the end of this game, it's just, and because there's, once again, as you said, Mark, the footage, where's the footage? Yeah. There was no footage yeah, and if it wasn't for NFL films, we'd have nothing. Listen, thank God for I stum- the Yeah, Steve I stumbled. On- <laughs> yes, exactly. I stumbled on something yesterday that I never saw uh, while I was watching the uh, or before the Cowboy game went on yesterday. I was watching, and I said, "Look at this thing!" And it was a guy that put together this game that I'm going to talk about here, he put it together and it said every play, that's what it says on the, on the he like tries to grab your attention. Right. It says, but what he meant was every play that's available. Yeah. He, he has it. Yeah. And he put it to the radio broadcast. He, he synced it, right. which I listened to the entire radio broadcast and I made these notes. That's how I made these notes in this game. I, it was uh, the armed forces radio And one of the guys was Monty Stickles doing the game. He used to play for the 49ers. Tight end, right? Yes, and he he teamed up with the other gentleman. His name escapes me. He he did the play-by-play. Right. And I listened listened to the whole thing. It was almost three hours long, so I I broke it into three separate nights. And I listened to an hour each night so I could really kind of take it all in. And... To to, to set the stage, the Cowboys had beaten the 49ers the previous two years in the playoffs 
actually in the championship games. That's right. One game in Akizar Stadium and one game in Dallas at the Cotton Bowl. So this game was played, it was the first year that the um, Candlestick Park opened. And, you know, one of the announcers, the guy that was doing the play, was so excited. He said, these fans are really, you know, revved up because they wanted to beat the – and the 49ers did not have a great record that year. But they beat the you Cowboys know? on Thanksgiving, 31%. Yes. Yes. Destroyed them. Yes, exactly. 10 beat them easily on Thanksgiving. Now you're talking. Yeah. But the record was only six, eight, six, and one, of the 49ers, and the Cowboys were 11 and four. But um, the 49ers were playing very well at this time. Right. Um, at this time of the year, they were playing better than the Cowboys, kind of. And you always knew my thoughts on Craig Morton. He was kind of. I just was never a big fan of Craig Morton. But anyway, he plays the game. The 49ers get the opening kickoff. Vic Washington runs it back 97 yards. Vic Washington, he was very fast. That's, there was an old rumor going around back then that he was going to race Bob Hayes at a halftime event. That was talking about Vic Washington was going to race Bob Hayes. How crazy was this? Yeah. But I, they used to talk about that. I remember it as a kid. Yeah. It never came off, but. That gave him the seven to nothing lead, and then uh, the Cowboys didn't do much with the first possession mark, and uh, the 49ers didn't do much. Either. They, they, uh, they. Oh, the Cowboys kicked the field goal. I'm sorry, on their first possession, they drove down. It was seven to three. Right. And on the 49ers' second possession, they didn't do much. They punted, and they traded punts. The Cowboys punted, but the Cowboys got a, got off a 60 yard punt. So they gained some field position on that sec on that on that punt in the second uh, possession, and then uh, Brody hits Gene Washington on a long fifty yard pass play on the third possession, and then they ran a double reverse on the next play or two after that, and Charlie Waters picked picked off uh, Brody in the end zone uh, for for an interception. Charlie Waters, I think this was his third year, correct? Yeah, Charlie third year. Yeah, he picks off Brody, and the game is still seven to three. And in the Cowboys' third possession, Morton fumbles um, with fifty-three seconds left in the quarter, and Tommy Hart recovers. Tom, the 49ers had a pretty good defense. They they had a good defensive line. They had Cedric Hardman at the defensive end. That's rough. And they had er, Earl Edwards and Charlie Kruger with one single bar on the face mask. By the way. He, that was those were the two down uh, two the inner inner uh, tackles and Tommy Hart was the other defensive end. They had a very good um, pass rush, right? Yes, they had a very they had five sacks by the way that game. Yeah, Cowboys didn't have a single sack, and the the guy brings this up, the announcer brings it up, and I I forgot about this. I I didn't know this or I forgot. I didn't remember. Then once he brought it up, I yeah. Bob Lilly ended up going to the hospital in this game. He had back spasms. That's right, and they. It, he had a bum knee, and they took him away. So he started the game, but he did not finish. The great defensive tackle, Bob Lilly, for the Cowboys, yeah, he was getting, did not finish the game. He was getting towards the end of his career, and the injuries were starting to mount up. Yes, he, yes, exactly. He only missed one game in that 14-year career, so he, he was very durable. But uh, in the second quarter, uh, they had a running back, the 49ers, Larry Schreiber, the guy scored three times. I forgot that as well. I didn't realize the guy had three touchdowns in this game. They were all short runs. They weren't yeah. looks like the guy was going on a you know forty yard scamper, but it was he did score three touchdowns. He ends up scoring, and now it's fourteen to three. And then Skip Vanderbunt in the next series when the Cowboys get the ball, he picks up uh he picks off Craig Morton. Um, I think he had two interceptions, Skip Vanderbunt, actually. He was a linebacker. And, uh, linebacker? Yes, yeah. it's very good. Yes, he had a big game. It was it was uh, Skip Vanderbunt, yep. Ed Beard at middle linebacker, and Dave Wilcox at the other outside linebacker position for the 49ers. What about uh, <clears throat> Nunley, Frank Nunley? He came in, yes. He he would come into the game. I think, I think Nunley was getting up. He was a little older than these guys. Okay. But, but he was still he, – he had a nickname. What the heck was fudge. it, Mark? Do you remember? I called him Fudge. Some fudge. 
Fudge something, hammer or fudge. Yeah, he was just yes. fudge hammer, fudge hammer or something like that because he was chubby. Yeah, Frank Frank Nunley. Yeah. Steve Summers used to talk about him because yeah. Summers was a, Summers was living out there at the time. He, he was actually a 49er fan, but he never really said that much on the radio, but yeah. he, he followed the 49ers when he was younger. Right. They had a good they had a good defense. And uh, you know, their their head coach. Um eventually he was with the Cowboys, Dick, Dick Nolan. Yeah, but he was co he went back to the Cowboys, but he, he was under the Tom Landry uh, that's right. uh tree. He was, uh, a coaching tree. Yeah. And he kind of set up that defense in the same uh vein as the Cowboy defense, kind of, you know. Right. They had uh, another Hall of Famer in the secondary, Jimmy Johnson, a cornerback. He was uh, great. And they also had they had a rookie playing who ended up, they ended up picking on him towards the end of the game, Wyndon Hall, Wyndon Hall. He was in there, Johnny Fuller and Bruce Taylor. Those were the four secondary men yep. for the 49ers. Yep. And they were good. Oh, yeah, very good. Bruce Taylor. They were very good. <laughs> so, uh, Schreiber, after the, after the uh, Vanderbunt interception, Gene Washington makes a catch down at the uh, uh, two yard line, and then Schreiber runs it in. Now it's twenty one to three. Yeah, Forty Niners are up. Uh, yep. Midway through the second quarter. Yep, again. Um, yeah. Unbelievable, Mark. Right. Twenty one three. Oh, it's. Uh, do, you, do you remember watching this game I at all? Remember watching the, it was two days before Christmas, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Two yeah, days before Christmas. Yep. Actually, and uh, was kind of a, a strange because uh, you know normally I would watch the games with my my brother and my father, but my my mother became a huge uh, you know because we were such huge. She started getting into it. She loved Roger <laughs> Staubach and Tom Landry. My mother really started getting into it. And yeah. I remember watching the game with her. My brother uh, was working on that day. He had a job at like one of those mom and pop stores. Uh, yeah, and he was working that day. He didn't actually get to see that game, and I'm not sure where my father. My father must have been with uh, visiting a friend or something, because I really remember watching that game with my mother. Imagine that. Yeah, she was really getting yeah. into it, and I, when it was twenty-one-three, I was ready to give up. My mother said, "No, nah, Roger's going to bring him back. Don't worry." Yeah. Oh, listen, Landry. Oh, we like it. We didn't. We didn't. Re we didn't really even know if he was going to get into the game. Yeah. Yeah. My mother said Landry's going to put Star back in. You watch. <laughs> Imagine that. Listen, he loved Craig Morton Landry. Yeah. He, he was Landry. Landry to a fault was he just? He no. kept that guy in there. He, you know, he he yeah. loved him. He came in, but he got hurt. Morton is. Yeah. He was never the same after that shoulder injury, and he didn't have good knees either. He no good knees, and uh, the guy couldn't get out of his own way. Yeah, he wasn't mobile, and the shoulder injury really messed him up. <clears throat> yeah, uh, so the Cowboys made a little go of it after that. They kicked a field goal, forty-five yard field goal, by the way. That was pretty good by. By Tony Fritch. Yeah. Uh, he was another soccer style guy. Australia. They picked up. Yes. <laughs> they picked him up on the kicking caravan with Ben Ben Agazzani, and they would go around the world That's right. and look for kickers. That this was the, nobody even no, that was unheard of back then. Yeah, nobody was doing. That. And uh, Bob Lilly used to tell a story. The guy was a uh, Fritch. The kicker. He was a, a mechanic for Mercedes Benz. Yeah. And they. They found him over there. He was a soccer style kicker in uh, Austria, and he was. They had a very important game in 1971 against the Cardinals, and they was lined up for a field goal. Fritch was, and Larry Stallings for the Cardinals was screaming at him, saying, "You know, Fritch, you can't kick. You, you're not from here. You, you're you, you're not going to make this." And Lily and the other guy, they said, "Save your breath, buddy. <laughs> he doesn't understand the stitch of English." He said, <laughs> "Because they all laughed about it, you know." Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he was uh, – it was, you know, they were – I mean, uh, the guy you just mentioned before, your premium for the Dolphins, he was a soccer style. Yep. You know, but there, there wasn't a lot of them no, no, back then. No. Not a lot of them. I think was Pete Gogolak the first one or no? And he had a brother too, Charlie Gogolak. Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah, they were the first ones. Mm. They were the first. It was, uh, yeah, it was a different. See, to see it not back then, it was it was rare. You know, it was a guy kicked the ball side. He came and didn't go straight ahead. And he, was, he was approaching the ball from a completely different angle, you know. And they were from Hungary, right? Uh, the Golaks. Yeah, I think they were. Yep. Fritz was from Austria. Um, Jan Stenerud was from Austria. Yeah, all these guys were foreign foreigners. By the end of the 70s, there was quite a few. Yeah. Um, but this game was 72. It was, like I said, like we were, it was rare. It was not very common. No. But um, San Francisco, after that Cowboy kicked that second field goal, it was 21-6. to six. They had a lousy punt. It only went 20 yards. Oh, yeah. And so the Cowboys set up at their own 47. They had great field position. Yeah. You know, they were almost at midfield. Um, but Calvin Hill fumbled. Um, and uh, Lance Allworth recovered, fortunately. Um, and then little, little, a little drop before the half, I believe it was, Lance Allworth scored it. They caught a pass over the middle. And he scored a touchdown. It was 21-13. 21-13. He was getting – he was get, I don't know how old he that was. was his Lance Alder. Yes. I was going to say he was getting up there in yeah. age. Um, and he was a little shaken up after that play. There's actually footage of that play. There's not a lot of footage of this game. Once again, I, I can't yeah. explain to people enough. There's big pieces here and there. Yeah. But it's – and a lot of it's from different camera angles. Yeah. It's not even from the same camera angle. Right. Some of it's from like a sideline camera where the, you're taking pictures from the side, like almost like you're down on the field. Right, right. <clears throat> Anyways, they come out of the they come out of into the second half, and uh Calvin Hill kind of fumbles for the second time. <clears throat> um and it's down near their goal line. Of course, San Francisco gets the ball. On this, I think it's down near the six-yard line or something. And Schreiber scores again. Now it's 28 to 13. Yeah. And the and it stays like that for a long period of time, that score. Yes. Through the through the entire third quarter, I believe. Yeah. Uh 28 to 13. Um and the Cowboys were just not playing well. They it's not like you you could say, well, you know. They just had a couple of – they just didn't really they – were, they were not playing well at all. Yeah. And uh, I think it was Bob Lilly who said, you know, they were coming by our bench, you know, swear, you know, cursing right. us and uh, making fun, you know, because, you know, like I said, they'd beat them two years prior, the Cowboys. And so this was the, a great revenge game for the 49ers. Right. And every, everything seemed to be kind of going their way pretty much, oh, right? Yeah, yeah it, didn't look, um, it didn't look good for Dallas, that's for sure. No. I mean, I think the Cowboys had four turnovers in the first half, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I think the first series, I think there was a series in the third quarter. I'm not sure if it was the first series or not, but Bob Hayes dropped a 55-yard pass right in the breadbasket and hit him. And it was down near the goal line, went right through his hands. He he had it like up against, almost like his, catching it against his chest, and it went right yeah. through. You know, and uh, Morton at that time, I think, was eight for 22 for 96 yards. Terrible, as usual. And they pulled him eventually in the third quarter. Your mother was right. Okay. Your mother knew more than we did. And they put Staw back into the game. And uh, the guy didn't have much playing time that year, right? You remember, Mark, right? For almost the whole season. Separated shoulder, I think it was. I think yep. he had to have surgery. Now was that? Yes, he did. Was that injury? That injury, I think, was in preseason, right? It was against the Rams. Yeah. Uh, Stallback's wife used to talk about yeah. that. She said when when he had the surgery, Tom Landry was there at the, in in the hospital. He says she says not a lot of people know about that. They thought he was just like this guy that this and this. And she said, but he showed up. That day, and he sat. He was there the whole day until Roger got out of surgery. She said, "You know, she talked about that." And I was just reading a book about it too. But um, yeah, so it's not like the stallback that we came to know. You know, this was kind of like his second 
year, but he didn't play much. So really um, look at, when you look at his career, <clears throat> he really had a short career. I mean, he has good, he's got the four years of naval commitment. Then 69, he hardly plays as a rookie. Yes. 1970, he hardly plays. One, yes. he doesn't become the starter until halfway through the season. And 72, he's injured for almost the whole season. Well, that's yes. what, uh, count my money. Four, six, four, his first four seasons, he really didn't play a heck of a lot. No, because uh, and at that time, he's 30 years yeah. old. Because he sat out the other four years with the that's Navy. Right. So when he got out of the Navy, whatever he was, tack on another seven, eight years to that age. Yeah. You know, people people don't people don't get that. You know, but there was a fifth turnover in the third quarter, yeah. and 49ers had the ball at the Cowboy thirty-one. Uh, that's about and that was at the time I was listening to the game on the radio. Like I said, that's about the time the guy made the announcement of Bob Lilly going into the going taking it to, over to the yeah. hospital. Um, he just casually brings it up, and um, you listen to the broadcast of that game, and it's great because they start talking about the Hail Mary game. The guy starts talking right. about it during this game. He says earlier today, Monty. He says, you know, the uh, the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers won fourteen to six or something like that, uh, or fourteen to seven, whatever it was. Um, they threw a pass on the last play. 13-7 was the final. That's what it was, 13-7, right. He says they threw a pass on the last play of the game. He says, and it ricocheted off of, you know, it's, way, it's funny how we've, it's been overanalyzed a gazillion times yeah. now, no big thing. But that was the day it yeah. happened, you know. It's, it takes on a whole different yeah. effect. It has a whole different meaning, Mark, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like you and if you listen to it now, you go like this was new. This was yeah. news. You know, it was yeah. brand new. And like you say, this this uh, this game between the Cowboys and 49ers kind of gets overshadowed because of what happened earlier in the day. This yes, Franco exactly. Harris play. Yes, here's a here's a big thing that we forget about, and it, this this game doesn't get talked about enough. Yeah. First of all, I said that already, but what we really forget about is. The kicker for the 49ers, Gossett, he misses two field goals, okay? Or this, it wouldn't have been 28. That would have been up to 34, I think, believe. Been, he misses two. He, he, uh, I think you, ahead, were just, you were just talking about the drive where they got into field goal range, and he missed the chip shot. It would have made it 31 to 13. They would have needed yes. three touched it. There was no two point conversion back then. They would have needed three. No. They might have lost the game right there. That field, that missed field yes. goal was crucial. Yes, and in the fourth quarter, he misses another. At thirteen thirty left to play in the game. He misses a thirty two yeah, yarder. That's the one I'm talking about. Would have made it thirty one yes. to thirteen. Yes, I think he missed one a little before so that, that one. which was not a. Which was well, right. We people weren't thinking about. There was a, a lot of time left, but this that one there was oh, crucial. The one yeah, you just brought up. I, I don't think they would have been able to come back. They would have needed three no. touchdowns. Uh, the Cowboys had a possession in the fourth quarter where they started at their own twenty, and on third and nineteen they converted that. That's huge. Yeah. People, people forget about that. Third and nineteen. He, I think he hits Billy yeah. Parks. I can't quite remember, but he converts that third and 19, um, which was, you know, it, it was kind of big. Yeah. Um, they traded they traded punts at 11-18. The Cowboys punted the ball. Marv Bateman, <laughs> ter terrible, hit a 29-yard yeah. punt. And the 49ers had great field position, okay? But they couldn't move the ball. Um. And the the Cowboys got the ball back, and they kicked the field goal, which made it twenty eight to sixteen. Right. Twenty eight to sixteen now. Okay, and if Gossett, if and Gossett people, had made it, it would have been thirty one yes. sixteen. Exactly. They would have had. To, I don't know if they would have tried. They would. Yeah. Made, they might have four goal the field goal went for it on fourth down. You yeah, don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean. 
And when they got the ball back, okay, uh, with 9.01 remaining, the Cowboys got the ball back. Yeah. And Calvin Hill ripped off a 47-yard run, the longest run of the game, I believe yeah. it was, uh, by either team. And that's what set up that twenty. That's what set up that twenty-seven yard field goal for uh, for Fritsch, which which made it twenty-eight sixteen. Um, the Forty ers got the ball back five plays and out, and with five forty-seven, the Cowboys uh, had a little drive going. There was two minutes left to go in the game, but it was still twenty-eight to sixteen. Twenty-eight to sixteen with two minutes yeah. left. You know, people. That that was that's amazing, really, if you think yeah. about it. You know, well, no, not good, Mark, at all, not good. And uh, he hit Garrison with a couple of sideline passes. I don't know if you remember that. You know, and they crossed midfield, and then they, they had the two minute warning right right yeah. about then. Um, and then what happens is st- he hits Parks at the twenty yard line, Stubbuck. It's it's like about a a twenty something yard pass. He hits Billy Parks, okay, with one thirty five left, and then he hits Parks again on the next play for the touchdown. Yeah. For the touchdown, so with a minute twenty eight left, there was two minutes. They scored. There was a minute twenty eight left, and they tried the onside kick. Yeah. They tried the onside yeah, kick. Like, Go ahead, Mark. You remember he, the, he did some kind of trick where he used his other leg. He tricked them, right? He put his one leg behind his other leg. I think it's I think yeah. it was Charlie Waters who talked about that. Yeah, he you're right. So Fritz, once again, the guy we talked about, the mechanic for Mercedes, he approaches the ball and he puts his he puts his kicking foot right. forward and he kicks the ball behind his yeah. with the other leg behind on the other side. So he kicks it. Doesn't instead of it going for right. he kicks it from the other side. It goes to the opposite side yeah. of the field. It goes to the right side with his left yeah. leg. He yeah. kicks it, and Mel Renfro jumps on the. It goes right through the Forty ers They had it, but right through his hands. Yeah, the guy threw them off just enough. Charlie Waters gives a very good explanation of it, and it threw them off just yep. enough. That you yes, you could mark. They have that kick. And some crazy guys in slow yeah. motion. I, I, they have it in slow motion on yeah. YouTube. It's about four minute video. <laughs> they keep playing it over and over. It goes right through the guy's hand. Mel Renfro jumps on it. First play, the Cowboys get the ball. Staubach runs for twenty yards. Yeah. So they get it at the fifty, approximately somewhere around midfield. Yeah. He runs down to about the thirty. Staubach. Okay. And then he hits Parks again at the 10 yard line. Okay. And um, he, on the last play there with 52 seconds left, he hits Sellers in the end zone um, right right over the middle. It, 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 those passes, too, there was very good coverage. And let me just, these guys weren't running yeah. wide open. The coverage was very, th- those were great balls by Staubach. Phenomenal. Yeah. Billy you know, Parks and uh, Ron Sellers, they picked up in trades, right? And neither, neither yeah. one of them yes. played that long for uh, Dallas. No, I think I think Billy Parks came from the Dwayne Thomas trade to the Parks. Chargers, yeah. I think. Yeah. But I didn't Ron Sellers come from the Patriots or no? They have, yeah, because that was that was. I can't remember, but they. Right, these guys were not there that long. No, correct, they weren't, they weren't there that long. Parks was big in that game. He, he, uh, um, he, he caught the touchdown. And when Bob Lilly describes it on NFL yeah. Films, there's a clip where Bob Lilly describes that play, and he says, "And Staubach hit Lee Falcons in the end zone. He makes a mistake. He thought it was Lee Falcons, uh, uh, Mark, who yeah, was gone was by retired. that time. It was. I don't even think he was on the no, roster. He was retired by then." Yes, but I noticed they play it again on the recent plays, on the recent tapes, and they put they they put that uh-huh. part out. He, they take that part out where he takes it says it's Falcons, but there is there is a clip you can yeah. find it where he talks about he hits Lee Falcons for the touchdown. Yeah. 
Um, as you said in the uh, in the game you discussed, Mark, the, the Chief game, So there was 52 seconds left, by the way. Nobody talks That's about right. this. The 49ers got the yeah. ball back. Yeah. And like you said, there's no footage, so you yeah. say, what did they do with the 52 seconds? So you can hear it in the radio broadcast. They ran four plays. Um, two of them were little passes to Schreiber, and then they made a, a, a they made a thirty something yard gain. They made a, they got a play down to the Cowboy thirty nine oh. yard line, but it was called back on a holding oh, penalty. Wow. Imagine that! I forgot all about yeah, that. That you like you said. It's... If not if not for that radio broadcast, Mark, we wouldn't even remember no, that. No, these things you don't hear. Fourth. About. No, exactly. Fourth play, uh, fourth play, he throws a pick to Charlie Waters. Charlie Waters gets a second interception of the yeah. game. Yeah, and that was it. That clinched it. 30 to 28. One of the most tremendous comebacks of all time. And it doesn't, they, everybody talks about the, the Hail Mary, which was great and everything. But this game gets completely yeah, overlooked. You're right. The 1972 divisional. A playoff game again, partially maybe because the following week the Cowboys got hammered by the uh, by the yeah. Redskins. So that could partially be maybe why Mark or you think you part, know part of that could be, and then also like we said the the game before it kind of overshadowed it, and it just gets kind of lost in history. But uh, I, I I just looked up Billy Parks. Seven receptions for 136 wow. yards yeah. and a tu- and a touchdown. I believe they got those. Two, they got Parks and they got Sellers because Allworth was up in age. Bob Hayes was getting up in age. They yes, sir. That's yet. right. He was still in college. So. No, Mike Ditka, their tight end, was up yeah. in age. Yeah, well, it was, it was, that, 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 this was his, was this Ditka's last season? That was Ditka's last season, yeah. And it was Allworth's last season. Allworth and uh, I think Hayes played one more season after that. Yeah, they actually, the ironic thing is they actually ended up uh, either, I don't know if they traded him, but they got rid of Bob Hayes and he went to the 49ers. Yeah, that was his final season. He didn't do much there. He was he was pretty much washed up by then. <clears throat> Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. All right, that was a great game, and there's uh, footage of Larry Cole rolling around on the ground on the yeah right. Larry, Larry Cole was rolling around. You know, he was so happy. He was. Somebody even grabs. Somebody even grabs Landry. It wasn't a yeah. player. It was somebody else comes. They, they actually grab him. Yeah. They hug him, like on the sideline. You know what I mean? And Landry had a big smile yeah. on his face. Yeah, one of the few times you see him smiling. What a game! Yeah, I think I think Frank Gleber might have done the radio. I'm not sure if he did the radio broadcast um, of that game for the Cowboys. I'm not really sure if he. I, I know he. I know he did the. Uh, he did the immaculate. I mean, the uh, Hail Mary game, didn't he? Pretty Wouldn't sure. you? Would you believe it? He says that that's Frank Gleber. Yeah. I think right. Yeah. What a game! And I remember uh, it was a. You know, it's, like I said, I can't really remember. My father must have been with a friend or something because and my brother was working. So it was me and my mother, and we were so ecstatic. We were jumping around the living room. We almost knocked over the Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that's great stuff. My mother, would, my, my mother would have never. She almost threw me out of the house one time. No, I'm not even kidding. In the seventy nine, the the double comeback game, the seventy nine game against the Redskins. See, I'm not kidding. She said, "What the hell's going on up here?" I was in my sister's yeah. room. My sister was gone that day. I watched that game on a thirteen inch black and white television set. That the double comeback right. game. <laughs> but uh, listen, Craig Morton, Mark, twenty nine, twenty nine point two quarterback rating yeah. for this game. Wow. Staubach was 12 for 20, 174 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, believe it or not, he was sacked four times. He had a 121.7 on the quarterback rating, Staubach. 
Unbelievable. That's when they started calling him Captain Comeback, right? <laughs> yes, Captain exactly. King. That was one of the first. I wouldn't say that. He might have had. I'm not sure what he had that 71 season for comebacks, but he was he was when he took over, they won eight straight. But this was, I think, one of the first of the miraculous ones. Yes. Yeah, fourth thing. They won uh 71, including the including the playoffs and the Super Bowl, they won ten games in a row. They were Imagine four and that. three. Four and three uh, yes. when Starback took over. And then they won ten games in yep. a row. There were four and three, and they were shuttling yeah. quarterbacks on each play. Can you imagine that? And the guy, the players did not like it. Bob Lilly talked yeah. about it. He said the players did not like the fact that you they were pick a quarterback, which one we don't care, just yeah. pick one. That's that's what he yeah. said, Lilly. And he said we we had Leroy Jordan go talk to Coach Landry yeah. about it, and. Uh, you know, the, the, it's, Staubach talked about it. He said, you know, Landry was kind of as smart as he was. He was a kind of a quirky guy. And he thought that this would be, you know, he, he he had as great as he was, Landry. You think about it, as smart as he was, guy was an engineer. He, he, he thought that the players were just like cogs in a machine. Like you could just insert them and take guys out and like, he didn't account for any kind of like, uh, you know, you know when they have a, a certain they, there's a certain word I'm 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 not sure it's I'm losing my uh, train of thought with it right. but it's the yeah. intangibles that's yeah. what I was looking for like those were they didn't come into play in Landry's no. mind that, that's like kind of like a, a flaw kind of it's in a like way but engineer, like, uh, how, like you say had that engineer's mind from right how. Right, exactly. How could you not think? He he thought, geez, I have the perfect plan. I put these players in, and they screw up the game plan. <laughs> you know, that, that's how he thought, Landry, yeah. in a way. And he thought if he could shuttle these, instead of using guards or tight ends, he used to use the tight end, yeah. Landry. But um, he was shuttling in quarterbacks. It's insane. Yeah, he didn't like, uh, he, he, he wasn't uh, big on rookies. Like, uh, you know, he, he, he didn't like the... The inexperienced, he liked the experienced players, much like George Allen, right? Uh, he liked those experienced yes. players, the veterans. And like you say, he really, uh, he liked Greg Morton and stuck with him. No matter how many bad games he had, he stuck with him and uh, finally made the switch. And then following your star back gets hurt after. But Yeah, he... He had this. He had this thing where he thought that the quarterback had to, like a, a rookie, had to do his time on the bench yeah. and watch. You know, it's, it's the exact opposite today. They throw these guys right in the games yeah. now. But um, he thought that you had to be at least. He thought it was three yeah. years. This was all that. See, that's what he thought. Three years on the bench should do it. You know, and like Staubach said, I didn't have three years yeah, to he burn. Was already, he was a twenty-seven-year-old rookie. He came into the league. He was twenty seven sure. years old. Because of his label. You know, looking at the looking at the 49ers stats, Mark, uh John Brody did not have a good game. He was twelve for twenty two, hundred and fifty yards. He had a thirty eight point one rating. Yeah, that's not good. Thirty eight point one, right? Well he was up in age, right? Larry, he was up in age. Yeah, I mean he played he played in the fifties. He started in fifty seven. Fifty six, maybe even. He was old. He was up there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they had about uh, Schreiber had twenty six carries for fifty two yards, and those three touchdowns that I talked about. His longest run was six uh -huh. yards. He was three three yards in a cloud yeah. of dust. Um, I I don't think you know. I'm not seeing his name anywhere. I don't think Ken Willard was on the team yet. He was was on he the team? Maybe he was injured. He didn't play a single. He didn't. He didn't play a single he play. Mark. Injured. He was on the team. Yeah. Um, Vic Washington had ten carries for fifty-six yards, and he had a long run of twenty-two. Yeah, why they didn't okay, so they. hundred and eight yards rushing. Uh, they had the Cowboy defense was still pretty, 
pretty decent at that time. It wasn't as good as it was the year before. Yeah. Um, and that was a 4 o'clock start. And you were right, Mark. December 23rd, two days before Christmas, 1972. Yeah. Um, and that game was played on a, that was not real grass. I don't think in candlestick park yeah. back then. Um, and, uh, it was a great game, much not talked about a lot. Unfortunately, um, gets lost in the thing of great comeback games. It's never really mentioned too much, but it's one of the greatest of all time. As far as I'm concerned, four, six, they were down, uh, 28, 16 in the fourth quarter with five minutes. They scored the three, the field goal. Still down two t- two scores under two yeah. minutes, and they and they pulled yeah. it off. Unbelievable! That's yeah. it. I want to. By, by the way, before we sign out, I gonna I want to give a shout out to Arnie. Congratulations to yeah. the Lions, Arnie. The Lions a big win last Arnie's night, buddy. Waiting a long time for his Lions to do something. Yeah, a, a big win for that. But uh, I thought they were going to win. It was a little closer than I thought, actually. I think it was a one-point game, somebody said. But um, I was watching a bits and pieces after the Cowboy game. I was so disgusted. But they pulled it out. I thought that they would win the Lions. I did. I thought they would actually win by probably six or seven. But um, the Rams played played them pretty tough, I guess. So now it's uh, they're going to end up playing the winner of that game today. I, the the, uh, the uh, Eagles played the uh, Buccaneers. And I could see the Lions beating either of those teams. Yeah. Uh, the Eagles are not what they were earlier in the year. The, I, I could see the Lions actually advancing and probably most likely playing the 49ers out in Candles. I mean, out in uh, the new Levi Stadium out there. Although I, I wouldn't I, I, I wouldn't give the Packers a big – after watching the game yesterday, I don't know, maybe the 49ers match up against them. They were very impressive to me, the Packers. The, but it's good for Arnie. Good for the De- city of Detroit, really. Yes. You know, that was their first playoff win since 1991. They beat the Cowboys, right? 1991. It, yes, they did. And they beat Jimmy Johnson, and they beat the Cowboys. I think they had – was it Eric Hipple? I, was. I can't remember who's court. I think it was – they actually beat the Cowboys handily that day. Yeah. Killed them. Yep. So, good thing. But that was it, Mark. We, we covered a couple of great games. Okay. Those were – Two of the greatest uh, playoff games of that era, probably of maybe even of all time, but definitely that era, no oh, doubt about yeah, it. That same, uh, like you said, two two great games on the same day: the the Steelers, unbelievable the Harris, and then the the Cowboys game right after, unbelievable. My buddy, my buddy was a huge. He's still well, not so much anymore, but he's a huge Raider fan and. Uh, we went out for Al Davis's induction into the Hall of Fame. I probably talked about this once mm-hmm. before, but the Raider players were so impressed with my buddy Ray yeah. that they that they uh, had him come in to this private party for Al yeah. Davis. And there we, they are two guys, just me and him. And there we were, we're in this, <laughs> we're in this room with all these, you know. There was oh look, a man was there. All these guys were there. They had this huge ice sculptor of the Raider <laughs> shield. It was be- it was yeah. beautiful, and they you know some of these backup offensive linemen. There was a George Beeler. He played, and uh, there was a couple other guys there. And they're saying they said to my buddy, "Geez, you got to be a big fan if you know yeah. who we are." Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's why they had him. That's why they had him come in there. Believe it or not, but everybody was there. Kenny King and uh, uh, oh, Daryl LaMonica was there. Blanda, he was kind of grumpy. George Blanda, a little, I'll be honest, but. That was a great we, – we had a lot of fun with that. That was uh, before things got out of hand and not like the what we just experienced in our trip to the Hall of Fame this past year. But, you know, uh, oh, comp- it's a different – whole different ball game. They, I hate to say it, they kind of took the fun out of it, oh, Mark, yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah, but that was uh, the Raiders. And I think Jack Tatum, you know, I don't know if that ball – I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if that ball ever really hit Frenchie Fuqua. Mm-hmm. I, it it, it comes it comes away with so much yeah. force that it because ha- Tatum's moving in on him with, for the hit that it's got it's got to be Tatum that yeah. it hits. It's so, it's so hard to tell. No matter how many times you watch it, it's hard to tell. But uh... I wonder if there's any footage. I mean, you, you never know. Probably not. It would have surfaced by now. But from the footage that I've watched. 
I actually think he did catch the ball, that it didn't I hit the ground. I don't think it hit the ground, no. I don't think it hit the ground. No. It's it's hard to see it. There's one, they did a special NFL films where they take that play and they dissect yeah. it. And um, you could see just the way he catches it in stride, right. kind of. You know, if it hits the ground, it would have been kind of a different I dynamic. But um, it, it just, you know, it's one of the craziest... Uh, things and like you said, both in one 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 day, Mark. It was great. That was great. Football was great back then. It really was. I know we were younger, and we looked at things differently. And you know, we were at a completely different time of our life. But it was just football. You talk to anybody; they loved football in the '60s and '70s. They claim it was the greatest era of all time. Some of them, a lot of people say that. Not just not just I'm you so and I. Glad we we got to be a part of it because uh, the the game today is. Uh, I feel sorry for the the kids today. It's just, you know. Yeah, they they don't really understand. Don't uh, real you watch, is. No, no. You know they watch the game, and uh, you, you, like the game yesterday, they watch and they they get mad and they they, they think it's instantaneous that you can get on it twenty minutes after game and blame this guy, this yeah. guy, this guy. When it really doesn't work that yeah, way. Look, at, look how many you know? things, like we were discussing, how many things happen in a game that you don't even know. You know, like that fake field goal that got all screwed up. I never heard that before. No. No. Things that no. Bobby, Bell, Bobby Bell talks about it in an interview. I don't know if you ever saw I'll send it to you if you've ever But, you know, I when I look at the game yesterday and I said, when you're down 27 yeah. to 7, and you and you're passing on every down. Well, that's why he got picked off, Prescott. That's why the guy ran at him for a pick six. you you see, that's the one thing about Landry. You could say whatever you want, but you know what? He never gave up on the running game. He always would he would always filter it in there. You know, they would be down by three touchdowns. They said, What's he running the ball for? But you know what? You still have to keep defenses yeah. honest. And th- that's what happened yesterday. And they say, Well, Prescott, he threw you know something? Doesn't matter. They were honing in. They were passing the ball and on every down. Knows. And that's like, what yeah, happens. The defense knows you're going to pass. They're ready for it. <laughs> it's it's not just, okay, he threw a bad pass. He should have saw that. There's there's more to oh, it than that. The, the, these people don't get it. And, and yeah. well, you know. So, but that's that was that was it, Mark. That's we we covered two great games. They were those were great games. I'm, I'm sorry, they were some of the best. All right, uh, glad we got to talk about it. It was yeah, good good seeing you, Mark. Good good coming on with you today. Appreciate Always that. A pleasure. Yeah, you take care, Mark. You uh, God bless you. Thank you. Enjoy. Okay. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hey there, Sports History fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude, and I wanted to thank you for stopping by to listen to another episode here on the Sports History Network. Our podcasters are passionate about uncovering and sharing sports stories from yesteryear. And if you didn't know it already, we have over 30 shows across the network covering all sorts of sports history topics. In fact, here's a glimpse into one of our awesome podcasts here on the network. Hello, football friends. This is Darren Hayes of the Pigskin Dispatch Podcast, and I'd like to invite you to the portal of positive football history, Pigskin Dispatch and pigskindispatch.com. We talk about everything that centers around the game of American football, expert discussions, the origins of the games, the great players, teams, and coaches, and more, and some great guests and insights from experts. We have new episodes three to four times a week, and you can find us on sportshistorynetwork.com, pigskindispatch.com, or your favorite podcast provider. How about that? I bet you're super hyped to go listen to that new podcast, right? Well, to learn about this show and all the other podcasts on the network, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Again, that's sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Head over there today to find your next favorite sports history podcast.